We've come to a really unique environment today, so let's jump right in. I wonder what creatures can survive in an environment as hostile as this one. Let's go and have a look and see what we can find. As we're walking out towards the west, you may see a large amount of flying creatures. These flying creatures aren't birds. They are, in fact, a type of megabat, commonly called fruit bats. These amazing animals are flying mammals that typically live in massive colonies within mangrove trees and other trees by the ocean. As their name suggests, they mostly eat fruit, leaves, pollen, seed pods, bark and twigs. Eucalyptus flowers are a particular favourite of the Australian fruit bats. They are a very social animal and will communicate via vocal noises like honking or trills. Some species of megabat can live up to 30 years old. Certain types of female megabats have been observed taking fruit from males in exchange for sex. They're mostly nocturnal, coming out around the time when the sun goes down, but sometimes a few hours before, like we can see with these ones. They have a very good sense of smell, which they use to locate fruit and nectar, but their eyesight isn't very good. Of course, you may know, bats also use echolocation to map out their environments. However, the mega bats do not have this ability and have to rely on their sight and smell to find food. They're quite slow to reproduce and can potentially carry lots of viruses that can be harmful to humans. So it's best to avoid another pandemic and leave them be. And we were here for quite a while, and over the course of almost two hours, there was an endless stream of bats flying out from the mangrove trees and the other trees along this coastal area that they've made their home. There were so many bats. They obviously liked flying over this massive sand dune that we're on, Speaking of this massive sand dune, this area is called the Carlos Sandblow, which is named by Captain Cook after one of his crew members. A sandblow, as the name suggests, is a large amount of sand that's been blown up from the sea and accumulated over time to form a really big dune. Some of them can grow at a rate of one meter per year. This massive sand dune grows bigger every day and is quickly taking over the nearby forest, which we can see evidence of by trees poking out the top of the sand. It's one of the largest sand blows in the world. And look at all these bats. They obviously like flying around in this air that's being blown up from the ocean. This place sure looks like a desert. We've even got plants that look like they belong in a desert. It's actually one big sand dune. You can see these plants are just hanging on to life, but they're surrounded by the sand and they won't be there for much longer. They'll eventually get covered with the sand. Like these tops of the trees that we're seeing, they will get totally covered and then all that will be left is these stumps. Ah. I was just under attack by a massive horsefly and it did not want to leave us alone. Despite the strong winds, it was persistent in following me around. These are the tops of the trees that we're looking at at the moment. And this sand dune was so big. It's really hard to get a sense of how big this was, but you can see people off in the distance. It was very hard to walk on because of the steep angles of the sand dune. And there's the ocean. 
You can see those cliffs, they're just made out of compacted sand, so they're very brittle. And all this sand has just been blown up from the ocean over millions of years. We've come to the very edge of the sand dunes now, and as you can see behind me, we can't go any further because there's nothing but the ocean. But the sand's changed a lot. As you can see, there's this tough sandstone behind me and it's got a little bit of iron in there as well, which makes it really tough. But it's also really crumbly because it's just held together with sand. It just amazes me, all these different lines, the sand has settled and then it's dried and then it's been pushed down with pressure and made all of these distinct ridges. So you can actually date how old this place is by each one of these ridges in the sandstone. But there was some life living on this sand dune. And this is a little sand crab. Very fast moving and very vulnerable to predators. So he was quite afraid when I came along but they felt safe underneath this branch. Who would have thought that a creature as complex as this crab could survive in this desert? There's virtually nothing around but somehow this little sand crab has made this place his home. And he camouflages so well with the sand that you almost not see him if he wasn't moving around so quickly. There's even a few really tough species of flower that have managed to make this environment their home. Look at these ones, they got a really nice yellow coloration on them. You can see there's quite a lot of variation in the sand. It goes from a really dark yellow colour to a really bright white colour. And there was sand being blown in my face constantly as the sand dune grows bigger and bigger from the air currents being blown off the ocean and whipping sand up onto the sand dune. Check out this big chunk of sandstone behind me. There's such variation in the colour. You get this dark blackness and then this real white, this really bright white colour and look it just crumbles away so easily. And that's what these cliffs are made of. So you've got to stay well away from the edge otherwise you will fall when this crumbles under your weight. Because as you can see there's really not much to it. And look at these amazing patterns and structures that the sand creates. They look like artworks. They're so beautiful and so much variation in colour. Wow, that's incredible. The sand gets whipped up from the beach down below and it's like a natural ramp and all the sand gets pushed up here and adds to this desert that's growing bigger and bigger every single day. As you can see, all of this is just compacted sand that over time has formed into sandstone and it's really crumbly. So there's not much to this dune, it's just lots and lots of sand from the ocean. Well, as we walk off into the sunset, I hope you enjoyed learning about the unique wildlife that lives on and around the sand blow. It's a very interesting environment it's a very unique environment, and it's a very hostile environment. And it gives a wonderful view of the sun going down behind the mountains. So I hope you enjoyed learning about these creatures. Keep it murky, and we'll see you on our next adventure.